Welcome back to Hot Stocks. We turn our attention to Gold One International. The company recently announced that the Namibian Competition Commission has given the green light to its takeover by Chinese consortium. All other remaining regulatory conditions are on track. We've got a market cap for Gold One of 3.9 billion plus earnings ratio of 14.6 and a zero dividend yield, not paying dividend. I want to come more into that Chinese consortium in a, in a moment. It's a nice deal, but I'm not quite sure where it's there. But you send us a chart, in essence, it's a leverage effect. I mean, what we've got here is their modern east, which mined three to 500 meters, incredibly shallow. Uh, cash costs of 484. We've seen the rand at 770. We've seen gold, okay, dipping below 1800, but let's call it 1800. Those sort of numbers flow in, and it just, it, it almost goes straight to bottom line and just booms their, their, their profits. Yes, well, this is, this, is a, this is a particular situation that Chris and I discussed in the last show, is that you have a situation, and if you look at this table, uh, you'll see that basically if the gold company uh, keeps production the same, um, you'll see that the revenue figure on a per ounce basis uh, shoots up from uh, around uh, 10,192 Rand to 13,500. And that's without any change to increased production or if with your costs the same it's just because that there's been roughly a I think 11 percent depreciation in the rand from about 675 to 750 this is based on the reporting figures uh, to June 2011 mm -hmm. by the company um, they used the average exchange rate of 675 we're now seeing uh, the rand dollar at 770 uh, I put in 750 just to 750 just to show the illustration and then the, uh, gold, the gold price, which they used uh, an average price of, of uh, $1,510 $1, per ounce. Uh, you, you plug in $1,800 an ounce. And what you can see right at the bottom there on the table is the massive jump in operating uh, income per ounce. That increases by uh, about 74%. So this is obviously not only uh, facing gold, one in particular, but it's facing all the gold companies. And so... When Chris and I were discussing this on the show, typically what happens is that the, uh, the gold price of, of, of gold companies lags uh, the inputs, obviously because the Randall exchange rate and the gold price is so volatile. But as these things start to look entrenched, then you get this massive gearing effect that the that the gold shares bring, and I think that <laughs> partly explains your stock pick for the no, night. Exactly, <laughs> this is what you gold bulls are waiting I'm for. I mean, this is bull, this is yeah. your payday. Exactly, and I think um, it's exactly right. The the leverage effect is starting to work because the gold price is now starting to rise faster than the costs, and that that is. And, and when that starts to pull away fast enough, these companies really can print cash uh, in, in enormous uh, uh, quantities. Um, I think th this company has also got uh, room for expansion as well. Um, the, you know, there's a whole lot of these old mines that that do, do have some uh, production potential um, across that East Rand basis. In fact, across the entire Vitz field, uh, but they are marginal. And at a certain price, you just get that that uh, embedded optionality that starts to kick in. And it looks like, from a t at least a technical point of view, that gold is breaking out of. The probably about a six-year base uh, that it's formed over the last, um, uh, well, six years. Um, <laughs> and, um, and that is significant. And you may well find that uh, gold shares in these kind of conditions where you've got debt problems and, um, and the response to those debt problems is debasement or quantitative easing uh, or, or huge budget deficit, that systemic instability suggests that uh, gold will start to see the accumulation phase in your portfolios. I think up until now it's the transition phase where it's moved from being a speculative asset that you just traded to being a safe haven asset. But uh, bonds and cash are still seen as your safe havens, or that's what managers are holding. The Not Greek bonds, but... The, the, <laughs> no, exactly. Well, that's the point. Greek bonds uh, uh, are the poster child to say that bonds and cash traditionally a defensive asset are becoming the epicenter of risk with debasement and and um, and default risk coming through and that's why gold with zero interest rates and more quantitative easing whatever the case is is probably still got some way to go but the real question is is gold in a bubble Nuro Rubini seems no. to think so not no I know he th th but he thought it was in a bubble at 700 and 1,000, et cetera. It's in a bull market, and that bull market is going into its second phase. The first one, as I say, transition. I think the second phase of that bull market is the accumulation phase for the next, say, th three, four years, where the actual trade 
trajectory just starts to steepen. We still haven't got to a mania phase yet. Uh, Warren, uh, the Chinese uh, Junta transaction where they're looking to buy 60% of gold one um, and, and inject 150 million Australian dollars, which gives them a nice lot of cash, particularly for their own uranium transaction, which brings more on stream. Chris talks about the other potential marginal mines. The question I have, and, and it's maybe not a fair question because maybe you know as much as I do, why are the Chinese buying it? I understand when they buy a copper mine, or a, but are they just buying it for the cash flows, or, or what, what's the story behind it? I, I can't understand it either, so I mean, I, mean, I know with uh, your base metals there's a strategic interest yeah. from China. Makes sense. Invest. With gold, I don't know, they can, they, and they can buy much bigger producers. I mean, with the Iran uranium acquisition, you're looking at a production profile of about 280 thousand ounces next year mm -hmm. of gold um, and then slightly more in the, in the years that follow going up to about 310 but I, I I can't give you an answer for that I can only think it's because the uranium assets in that the company owns um, but I couldn't I can't figure and they that got out. more uranium with the Rand uranium it's transaction. It's also building up the, the gold reserves the Chinese have stated that they want to build up the their gold reserves. So it is that they actually want the physical metal? They, I think they want the physical metal um, and it's one of their, 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 their techniques is to actually use their foreign exchange reserves and they're effectively converting their paper into hard assets so that it, whether it's a gold mine or a, a copper mine or whatever they're busy buying hard assets with, with those reserves and um, there's but, nothing. But Chris on that yeah. I mean for, for, for China with its, with its foreign exchange reserves the size it has Yes. Surely playing, buying a mid-tier producer, it's, at the moment as I understand it, they're getting about, uh, they will own about 20% of the company. Yes. If, if you're serious about bolstering your, and, and converting your paper into gold, surely you'd look at a gold field or a Anglo oh, gold. That, Anglo gold and, and, and go yeah, big. That, go that go I big believe there. can still happen. Okay, that's not um, impossible. But uh, the Chinese already have had resistance when buying American uh, North American producers with regulatory resistance because it's the Chinese and uh, this is an easy one you just come in there's no no particular uh, problems with that low key under the radars <laughs> but it, 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 etc but I agree it's a it is small fry but it's part of their, their overall strategy that will continue and it won't it will also be coal coal mine mm -hmm. coal companies etc but this is you know the, China is often seen as a threat, and so the big prizes they, they can stay leave, away from. and they can pick up these little changes. Gold one, I think, with sufficient injection of capital, has quite a big um, growth potential. If you start looking at the kinds of old mines that they can actually uh, dust off and and revive, so it's not as if that it cannot become a more significant producer. Well, the Chinese certainly think it's hot, and the market mm -hmm. thought it was hot today, up 1.74% on the day. Chris, how do you feel about gold one? Well, funny enough, the overall gold in index was up 5%, and it still reflects that your, your large caps probably were, were outperforming your small caps for the moment. But I think this is hot. Hot. Yeah. How about you, Warren? Hot I think not? it's hot as well. Yeah, I think despite uh, despite the, the, the gold price, I think the gold price is going to be strong, and that's... Uh, and they've got th they're increasing their production over the next few years so I think they're going to be in a good space but uh, I think the Randy is going to come back so it might get uh, it might suffer a little bit the share price if the Rand comes back to seven Rand or seven ten thereabouts but I think over the medium term it's it's increasing gold production in, in a in a perfect market for gold so I'm, I'm quite bullish on the share two hots here in the studio Simon, is all that glitters gold? <laughs> mm. I am not a fan of gold or a believer and the like. I, I'm going to, you know, if I go to buy a gold mine, it's probably be Pan African. But I've got to say, I think I find another gold mine that's looking good. They, you know, no debt worries, low cost producer. Some of our guys, I don't like the big guys, but some of the little guys are looking good. So I'm, I'm going to go against all my better judgment <laughs> and say it's a hot stock. Hot stock. <laughs> well, Chris, you also think another yeah. gold player is a hot stock. Goldfields is your stock pick. Gold Tell us fields. why. Well, it's, uh, I think a solid producer got quite a nice spread of uh, assets, uh, but, but not too many. In other words, good quality assets spread around the world. Um, and uh, so it's not, I think, a little bit more than half now is, is offshore. Uh, still got growth potential um, and uh, it's got operational stability and, and more, more certainty um, which is why I, at this stage I think uh, if you're going to have institutions piling into the sector so they'll go for 
the big ones first, and then the second ones would be the second phase of the gold share bull market. Well, well, but press for time, let's move on to Warren stock pick. Mine's uh, the Palladium ETN. Standard Bank's launched their precious metals uh, e exchange traded notes, so it gives you exposure to the US dollar futures price of Palladium. Palladium's a material I think that's actually in deficit at the moment, and uh, while the platinum majors suffer with big cost increases, I think the price of pal palladium in the short term can only go up. So that's my hot, st hot stock pick for the night. Thank you very much, gentlemen. It seems that's all we have time mm -hmm. for. That's it for Hot Stocks. Thank you once again to our guests, Warren Dick from Investors Monthly and Chris Hart from Investment Solutions. From me, Rufilo Sisiane, and my co-host, Simon Brown from Just One Lap, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>